Laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level, whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, there's a new risk to the gun rights of millions of Americans, plus traveling into the wilds of Africa, your range reports, and more. Call in now, one Tom Talk Gun. Now, here's Tom. Well, hello! So glad that you could join us, because we are going to have some fun today. My name is Tom Gresham, and this is... Gun talk. We're going to be talking about guns and shooting and news of the day, of course. We're going to talk about hunting. It is the uh, height of the hunting season in a lot of places. Some places it's winding down, but we'll still talk hunting. And of course, uh, if you are willing and able, you can hunt all over the world, various times of the year. We'll talk a little bit about that also. We're going to be giving away stuff, talk about that. We're going to be talking about some of the uh, TV shows that we put together on shooting and safety, and self-defense. But mostly what we're going to be doing is taking your calls, your comments, your thoughts. And the easy way for you to do that is to join us. Just call 866-825-5486. Who in the world can remember all of that? I can't. <laughs> all right, just make it easy. Just dial uh, Tom Talk Gun. Tom Talk Gun. And that'll get you in here. We're open lines right now. Okay, so we had... Just weird, bizarre, strange, baffling, irritating, uh, just enraging attack in the baggage area at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. Man gets on a plane and Alaska checks a firearm. When he gets to Fort Lauderdale, he goes, at least according to the reports, Gets his bag, goes into the uh, bathroom, gets his gun out of his bag, loads it up, comes back out, starts shooting people. Kills five, wounds a bunch more. The media, much of them, never knew that you could check a firearm on an airliner. Loses its collective mind. That's horrible. It's a loophole. What do you mean you can take a gun on a plane? Once again, of course, exposing their ignorance, utter, abject ignorance. Every day, thousands of people, let me repeat this, every day, thousands of people check firearms on airlines. Every day, 365 days a year for decade after decade after decade after decade, and you've never heard of this happening. That would make it an anomaly. Well, we have to we have to stop this. Really? Okay. And and at, at that point, are you aware that one can drive up to the pickup area, which is usually really close to the baggage area, park the car, get out, walk in with your uh, firearm? What are you gonna do about that? Big guy, Juan Williams, Don Lemon. Now, to be fair, there were a few people in the news who said, no, that's not a big deal. I, I personally have checked firearms, did it recently. At which point the other anchors and anchorettes kind of look at them and go, oh, what? It's like, you've got to be kidding me. And I think part of that was two twofold. One is you checked a gun, and number two is, oh, you own a gun? All right. So people say, well, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? I don't know. It all depends. Am I by myself? Do I have family with me? Avoid, evade, engage. It's a good ladder for looking at these kinds of things, for conducting your life. Avoid places where you think things like that may have a higher likelihood of happening. Oh, I would say maybe, oh, let's call it Bourbon Street at one o'clock in the morning. Avoid places where you think it is more likely that there could be bad guys or mayhem. 
if you can't avoid it and it just comes to you, then evade it. Get the heck out of Dodge. Run like crazy. Train your family to react quickly. Your family, let me say this, your family should be able to react and get moving on your signal within two seconds. That includes any kids older than three. If they're younger than three, pick them up and run. Maybe if they're older, it depends on size. But you should have a an emergency word for your family. And when you say this word, they simply stop what they're doing, immediately look at you and do what you say. If you say whatever it is, rutabaga, they stop what they're doing, they look at you and you say, we're all walking out of here, follow me right now. And they just get up, no matter what they're doing, in the middle of a sentence, put down their forks, whatever it is, and walk out the back with you through the kitchen or take off running if that's what's necessary. Two seconds. If you can't do that, you got some work to do. Because evading, that is getting away, using your sneakers, running away, is often the best thing. And sometimes it's the only thing you have. And then some say, well, if I had a gun, I w-. yeah, I know. Yeah, if I had a gun. If you'd come off that flight, chances are you wouldn't. Although, I will say this, I do know a number of people, <clears throat> he says, I do know a number of people who, when they get to an airport and they have checked their bag and they get their bag and it has a firearm in it, have been known to go into a bathroom and load it and put it on and leave the baggage area. No harm, no foul. Nobody knows. Nobody gets hurt. That also happens every day in America. So what was your first reaction when you heard this story? Did you go through the whole what would I do scenario? What did your friends say? And I guess the one that I really would like for you to call in and tell me is, did you actually scream and yell at a TV when you're watching The Morons? 866-TALK-GUN. That is really the question. How much did it drive you crazy listening to them? 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. Give me a holler. You can be on Gun Talk. Laser sights enhance shooting fundamentals, sight alignment, and trigger control. Training with laser sights increases muzzle awareness, improves and corrects sight alignment at sight picture, and aids in acquiring and maintaining sight picture in low light conditions. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Delio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Delio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Delio. Made in America. Gluten free. At the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, This vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShopGunTalk.com. ShopGunTalk.com. 
The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. Okay, um, <laughs> I don't understand this. First of all, I don't understand why somebody would call a talk show when they don't want to be on the air. And then we get this call that says, why is Tom telling people how to smuggle guns onto airlines? Okay, let's back up. Let's back up. It is absolutely and perfectly legal to have a firearm on an airliner. It is not legal for you to have it with you in the passenger compartment, but in your checked luggage, it is perfectly legal. For those who don't know, let me go over the regulations, the procedures. The gun must be unloaded. It must be in a hard case locked container. You can have ammunition in the case or not, depending on the airline. That's not an FAA or TSA regulation. If you have ammunition with you, it must not be in magazines. It must be in either original containers, i.e. boxes, or something like that, reloading cases, not in loaded mags. You take this piece of luggage up to the ticket counter, and here's what I say. I don't say, I have a gun in my bag. I say, I will need a firearm declaration card, please. At which point they give you a little card that you fill out that says the gun is unloaded. You put your name and address on it. They either put that inside the gun case or they tape it onto the gun case if the gun case is going inside of another piece of luggage, which I often do. At which point... You may or may not have to go to TSA, depends on the airline or the uh, airport. Some places they take the uh, case right there and just put it on the conveyor and it goes. Some places they say, now you got to go over there to the TSA guys, and they have to check it. Whatever it is, just do it. Allow an extra 30 minutes in your planning for all of this if you're traveling with a gun. At which point somebody will check it, then it goes on the airline, it goes down in the baggage hold... And then it comes off with the rest of the baggage. It's an unloaded gun in a hard locked case. No one's telling anybody how to smuggle a gun onto an airliner. Get the wax out of your ears, for goodness sakes. Bill is in Anchorage on line three. Bill, gun free zones, talk to me. Tom, are you aware that the baggage area in Florida is a gun-free zone? Well, evidently it's not because it's perfectly well, it legal is, to have it, a gun my there. My source is Breitbart, uh, and that comes from the Crime Prevention Research Center reports that Florida is one of only six states that prohibit concealed carry permit holders from carrying guns in the unsecured areas of airports. Well, that's a different thing. You said it was a gun-free zone, which I said, no, it's not, because you can have your gun there when it comes off in the baggage. Not in the now, state of Florida. Say, Florida is one, yeah. one of the six states in the United States that the baggage claim area is a gun-free zone. It makes no sense well, that's, whatsoever, that's, I know. But uh, okay, I understand what you're saying, but, but what I'm saying... Right yeah, but what I'm saying is it's not. I don't care what Breitbart says. I don't even care what the law says. It's not a gun-free zone because it's absolutely legal to have a gun there. Whoever wrote the law was dumb enough to not have factored in that there are hundreds and hundreds of guns in the baggage area every year as they come off on the luggage. So in the luggage, there are guns every day. People are picking up their guns in the baggage area. Now, I understand what you're saying is that they're saying, well, you can't carry a loaded gun in there. It's a gun-free zone. Okay. But that's... that. To your point, Bill, that's a rarity because in most states, it is legal to carry a gun in a commercial airport as long as you don't try to go past the security area. 
But again, that's a state law. Bill, I appreciate that. Line one, Dan is in Katy, Texas. Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. Go for it. I'm sick and tired of all of this. I live in Texas. We carry guns everywhere we go. I mean, every time somebody gets shot, they want to blame the gun. It's the operator error. It's not the gun. And I'm, I'm, re- I'm really tired of this mess. I mean, down here in Texas, I've come to Texas. We've got a low crime. Let them people from Chicago come down to Texas. Let them come to Houston. We found out when Katrina happened that, you know, people come in that are used to robbing and thieving, and they come to Texas, and then you find out what happens when you have people that are armed legally. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just have a real problem with this mess, and I, I understand there's a pro- maybe a problem here. But I've gone out of state hunting. I've gone to Wyoming. I've gone to Colorado. I've gone to Alaska. I've checked my mm-hmm. firearm. That is not an issue. Now, if, right. the only other thing that I think that might be a point here that I don't know whether anybody's even talked about is ammunition. If you've got a gun with no ammo, if they prohibit that, and I don't, e- and I don't even, I don't even suggest it really. But I'm just mm-hmm. saying, if you want to appease these lefties that are worried about it, make sure that you can't bring ammo with the gun. And I, and make okay, sure, I, you know, I, I, I understand. If you're going to a state where you can't buy ammo, then there runs, there's the rub. Well, the other thing here, Dan, and look, I appreciate the call. The other thing is that uh, you can't appease them. You cannot make them happy. You cannot make them stop. You can't make them slow down their assault on us. If you say, well, we just won't be able to take the ammo, they say, that's great. The next year they come back and say, well, if you can't take the ammo, you shouldn't have the gun. There is no way to offer them anything in the form of a compromise that slows them down in their constant march and in their efforts to simply take away your guns. That is their goal. Let me talk to Kenneth. He's online too in Cachada, Louisiana. Kenneth, thanks for calling Gun Talk. Yeah, uh, I've always believed uh, you talk about running. Mm-hmm. I've always believed if if I want to get shot, I'd rather get shot in the front than get shot in the back running. If I'm going to well, get shot, make, uh, at least uh, I'm going to be putting up a fight. Well, that makes that that kind of presupposes that you're going to get shot. What if uh, there are more than two options? What if one of the options is not getting shot? Well, oh, uh, let me th- let me throw out of something else. What if you're not alone? What if you got a wife or a kid with you? And I'm just throwing this out now because people need to think about this. What if by you pulling your gun, guy's got a gun out, he's robbing a place. You pull your gun out. He wasn't shooting anybody, but when you pulled your gun out, he started shooting, and he doesn't hit you. He just hits your wife and your kid. Well, I think that's stuff that a lot of people my, don't ever actually talk, gun, talk about. Think out. about. He ain't gonna have time not to shoot. Oh, give me a break, Kenneth. You're not that good. I don't care who you are. You're not that good. Nobody is. No, no Navy SEAL is that good. No IDPA shooter is that good. Nobody can guarantee in the middle of a gunfight that this guy's not going to get off shots. Tell you what, go to a good training school, uh, work with some munitions, and you, what you will find is a guy who's got a gun out will always, always beat you to the draw. Unless there's some kind of diversion, unless there's something else going on, if he's got a chance, he'll beat you to the draw. He has his gun out. So this whole, well, ah, he's not going to have a chance. No. I will suggest you go get yourself like five or ten full days of serious self-defense training. And then what you're going to find is a whole lot of that junk that we get fed in TV and movies and we think we know. All it does is screws up our heads. It makes us think we can do things. It makes us think, well, you know, it's the whole deal. I'd rather get shot in the back than one in the front. I don't want to get shot at all. And I'm not saying that you're always going to run. I'm not saying you're always going to fight. What I'm saying is thinking either one of those sets you up to make a bad decision. Back to my point. And I talk about this a lot. And I appreciate the call, Kenneth. Um, I suggest a mental exercise. You know, uh, Clint Smith talks about this to his classes. He says, you know, the difference between you and me is when you imagine the scenario, a self-defense scenario, 
when you visualize it and this movie runs in your head, you see everything you do working. Just the difference is when I run that video in my head, I see everything I do not working. And then I think, okay, and then what would I do? And then when that doesn't work, then what would I do? First of all, you're not going to get all your hits on target, probably. Secondly, all of your, you know, a hit with a handgun round statistically does not stop people. Statistically, it takes 2.5 hits, hits, to stop an attacker. Doesn't, doesn't matter if you're shooting a 9, 40, or 45. There's no difference, statistically. Now, let's complicate that. Now we've got people running around. Now you're trying to move. Oh, wait a minute. You're trying to hold on to your kid or your wife and get that person out of harm's way. And you're also trying to shoot. Oh, wait. One of the, oh, no, I'm sorry. Two of them just got shot. Now things really get complicated, don't they? Versus grabbing them and running around the corner. Maybe you come back. Your call. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong in this, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong here. I'm just saying that most people, in my experience, have not thought this through. If you haven't had serious training, if you have not had force-on-force training where you just keep getting shot Every which way, one time it's the bad guy. Another, the next scenario, it's one of the shoppers who you didn't know was a bad guy because you are you think you're the hero and you're going to shoot the bad guy. Oh, you didn't know. He had a lookout over there, and she looked like she was just shopping, but she whacks you in the back. Oh, darn. Huh. Didn't think of that. Huh. Well, you know what? If nobody's getting shot, and if it's just money, maybe. Just maybe you don't want to start a gunfight if there's not a gunfight. I can't tell you what's right, but I would just offer to you that you might want to give it some thought. And tell you what, sit there and think of the 20 things that could go wrong, 20 really, really bad things that could go wrong. Think about them in detail. Hey, did you know the uh, President Obama is just Senate seniors and a lot of other people? Maybe be non-gun owners. We'll talk about it when we come back. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor Tom Gresham. President Obama, one of the, and he keeps saying this over and over again. He says his big regret, the one thing he couldn't get done in eight years, was pass more gun control. He says, well, the people want it, except that they don't. More people are saying they don't want gun control than do. But in his mind, the people want it, and he thinks they should have it, and he just thinks it's terrible that he's not been able to push gun control through. The Congress. Oh, yeah, the Congress. That would be, you know, the people that we send to Washington to represent us who vote in our interest. If you can't convince them that we should have more gun control laws, then maybe the people don't want them. But not to be deterred. On his way out the door, he says, not a problem. I got this. There are things I alone can do. The vertical pronoun present. I, 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 I. Joining us right now to talk about what President Obama has just done, Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation. Alan, what did President Obama do? Well, he started this actually a a month or so ago, but his uh, plan was to make sure if you were in Social Security, a recipient of Social Security, and that you had somebody else manage your financial affairs, that you'd be barred from gun ownership and you couldn't go buy a firearm. Uh, and of course, now, of course, by his uh, administrative rule, it goes into effect January 18th, just before he's out of office. Uh, mm-hmm. And of course, it's not going to stick. Our concerns here is that there are currently 4.2 million adults who receive monthly Social Security pay- benefits 
that have somebody else manage their financial affairs or designated or representative to do that to the Social Security Administration. And, of course, they, they are now thrown where the administration wants to put all those names into the NIC system as disqualified from gun ownership. Uh, and mm-hmm. additionally, it's estimated there are at least 75,000 people per year that would be added to this database who would be this, you know, not allowed to own a firearm either. This isn't going to stick. Uh, we've talked about this with the Trump transition team, and uh, they're not going to allow it to, to, go, to, go, to go into effect. So it's probably going to be the first pro-gun move that the administration actually makes. Probably very quiet. My guess is our friends in the uh, dominant liberal media won't even report on it. They'll pre- pretend it didn't even happen. But it, while you try this, it's going to be it's going to be changed and reversed. All right. It sounds to me like this is, has all the echoes of exactly what has been happening over the past years at the Veterans Administration, where if you report that you have someone else handling your finances, they report you to the FBI and you get on the banned for life list. That's exactly the model that the Obama administration was using to expand it to disqualify more Americans from Second Amendment rights, doing exactly what they did with the Veterans Administration and moving it to Social Security. And, of course, the, uh, the new Trump administration coming in is also going to wipe out that uh, executive order that the, that the uh, administration has for veterans as well. Those are two key things that are going to change very quickly. Well, that's really good to hear. What else are you hearing, you know, from the Trump uh, transition team on? Because I know they've got a task force put together just for the Second Amendment, you know, on on the wish list of things that we can look forward to. What, what are you hearing? Well, they're they're obviously going to be pushing a concealed carry reciprocity uh, or concealed carry legislation that allows you to have a permit in one state. Uh, it's going to be good in another one. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. number of bills that have been introduced in Congress uh, over the years and, and currently as well for the new administration or new congressional cycle. Uh, and right. one of those is definitely going to get passed by the House and the Senate, and Trump will definitely sign one into law. So uh-huh. like Obama told us when he you know, got elected, you know, I won, you lost, you know, goodbye your rights. Well, now we won, they lost, and our rights are going to get extended and expanded. <laughs> We get our rights back because we won, they lost. Isn't it weird how when they win, they just delight in taking away our rights, and when we win, we delight in expanding rights for all Americans? Yeah, it really shows that, you know, it's really all about freedom. And uh, there's one, you know, one one set of politicians in this country that obviously doesn't care about individual rights or individual freedom, and other people who care an awful lot about it. So uh, this is going to be a really good sign for us. There's, there's going to be a number of things that are going to get to move through this Congress and get signed into law by the president. Uh, I don't expect them all to happen right away, because obviously mm-hmm. Trump's got a bunch of things on his agenda that he wants to move first. But there's sure. no doubt we're in good shape. But, of course, Tom, to me, the most important thing are going to be the judges. And the right. Democrats, uh, Harry Reid, of course, when he put in the so-called nuclear option, uh, now for any judges for the um, regular you know, bench or the appeals courts, federal appeals courts, it only needs a majority vote. They can't filibuster those. And those are the areas where Barack Obama has really done a lot of damage to us very quietly all across the country. I think uh, uh, something like, like nine of the uh, uh, district courts are now controlled by our opponents. That's going to change very quickly because there's a record number of vacancies to be appointed, and they won't be able to filibuster any of those because Harry Reid decided to change the rule to try and get how, more Democrats how ironic. To put in on the courts. Ironic, yes. yeah. It, it is, because he, he said, well, we're going to take away the requirement for 60 votes. We'll make it 50, because we don't have the 60, but we have the 50, and we're going to use that to run roughshod over the rights of Americans. And now, all of a sudden, it's kind of like you will hear the squeals from the Democrats and from the leftist media of, well, this is just not right. You you should have to have a supermajority and go, wait, 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 wait. Goose, gander, remember that whole thing? Yeah, it was okay. It was okay when the Democrats controlled it, but it's not okay when the Republicans control. And of course, it's the Democrats that changed the rule to begin with. Well, exactly. They and they changed it so that they could take away rights and they could shove in the leftist judges who will and have. I, I guess I should emphasize have taken away our rights. One of the things, and this is one thing I'd like for you to touch on, Alan. People say, well, you know, we've got the Heller decision and we've got the McDonald decision. But if the lower courts don't honor that, if they, in essence, ignore what the Supreme Court said, and if you have a Supreme Court where you can't get a case appeal to them, then you really don't, in fact, have the effect of a Heller decision, do you? You're correct. And it's not just that the lower courts have ignored it. 
In some cases, they've thumbed their nose at it, particularly in the Ninth Circuit. So the bottom line here is is that we're now going to make a change here. When Obama came into office, I think there were 58, uh, approximately 58 open judges uh, that were available. When Trump's coming in now, there's at least going to be 113. So we're going to have a very big impact on, on which direction these courts go in now. Exactly. Hey, Alan, hold on a second here. Quick break here. We're talking with Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation, kind of getting the update on what's going on with the uh, Trump administration as they come in. What's it going to mean for Second Amendment rights? If you've got a question about this, by all means, give us a holler. We can uh, tackle that one also. I know you have questions, you have thoughts about uh, what you'd like to see Trump do. 866-TALK-GUN is our number. Be right back with more Gun Talk. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. It's pure shooting fun for the whole family. The Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 Sport. A 22 rifle on an AR platform. The new, slim, easy-to-accessorize M&P handguard combined with Magpul M-Bus folding sights help you get shooting right out of the box. Lightweight, reliable. The M&P 1522 Sport from Smith & Wesson. Learn more at smith-wesson.com. All right, we're back with you. Talk with Alan Gottlieb from Second Amendment Foundation. And we got on line two, Jim's calling out of Elwood, Nebraska. Jim, you got a question for Alan? <laughs> Hardly had a time to catch your breath before you uh, answered me. Yes. <laughs> uh, you were talking okay. about uh, judgeship appointments that would only take mm-hmm. 50 votes now rather than the 60. Now, does that apply to the Supreme Court also? Oh, good question, That is Alan. an excellent is that... question, and the answer is no, it doesn't. They didn't remove the uh, nuclear option from the Supreme Court. That will still take 60 votes. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, so they You're can welcome. still filibuster on the Supreme Court. Yes, they, they can do that, but of course we do have, there are, I believe, 10 U.S. senators up for re-election in 2018 from states that uh, Donald Trump carried heavily. And I don't think a lot of those are going to want to buck him on the Supreme Court nomination. So it's going to be really tight and close uh, if they could filibuster. But we're going to get a pro-gun judge on the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, it's just I think they're going to stall it and make it difficult and obstruct as much as they can. But but we'll get there. It, believe me, Justice Clay will be replaced by a judge who supports Second Amendment rights. They're going to basically try to do what they did with uh, Clarence Thomas, they're going to try to delay it, drag it out, embarrass him, uh, just basically make it hard for everybody involved, but in the end, it'll go through. Yeah, it will, of course. The sooner the better for us to, to protect and, and extend gun rights. So uh, we want to get it done as fast as possible. But, yeah, we're, we're that's the one area where they're going to play some games with us. There's no two ways about it. Mm-hmm. And these lower court judges, I mean, to, to make a fine point on this, they have been taking these cases and just saying, no, that's not what uh, Heller means. Uh, no, Heller, they'll even go as far as saying basically the Supreme Court was wrong on Heller, and I'm not going to rule that way. 
Well, what they've done, Tom, is they've gone and said, well, Heller only applied to a handgun in your own home. So other guns right. don't count, and if it's not in your own home, it doesn't count, uh, which isn't what Heller said uh, or McDonald no. said. So that's, that's one way they've been getting around it. Then other ways they're getting around it is on the scrutiny question, where they just pretend that they don't need a heightened level of scrutiny uh, because it isn't really such a fundamental right. Well, of course, they have, at least in the last year, have felt comfortable doing that because they're figuring it's not going to get appealed, and I'm good to go on this. If you get a, another 5-4 conservative majority, then may, I don't know. I don't know if that affects the lower court uh, behavior yeah, or it, not. It, it has affected us in the lower courts, particularly in the Ninth Circuit, where we've even won some of these cases at the trial court level. Uh, you know, only to see it overturned at the appeals court level, or we've won it at the appeals court level, and then the Ninth Circuit goes in bonk so that all the judges, where they have a preponderance of anti-gun judges, then rule against us and overturn the appeals court ruling in our favor, uh, knowing that it's not going to the Supreme Court right now with a 4-4 tie, will not take any cases uh, involving gun rights, and then we're stuck with a loss. Uh, that's going to reverse now, thank mm-hmm. heavens, and it's really, really important. It couldn't come at a more important time in the history of legal Second Amendment rights. What can individual gun owners do right now to help? Because I know a lot of them are like heaving a big sigh of relief and thinking, okay, we're all good right now. And I know better. Having been around this long enough, I know there's always a fight to be had. Uh, Is is our work going to be more on the state level now for individuals? Well, let let me address this two ways. First, let me talk on the federal level. Uh, We still have to keep a lot of pressure on elected officials at the federal level to make sure these judges get through and then some of this legislation gets through. So even if you're in a Democratic state with an anti-gun Democrat right now, make them feel the heat. Because, you know, government only tends to do the right thing when there's no other no other thing for them to do. So we mm-hmm. have to push them and enforce them in that area. But in your que- answer to your question on the state level, the anti-gunners, of course, knowing that their agenda is totally, you know, botched at the federal level, they can only play opposition to us right now, they're going to move their agenda more to the state level and the local level. And, of course, that hurts us in places like you know, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland, Massachusetts, California. In most states, mm-hmm. we're going to be just in great shape. Uh, but there are some kind of pockets of resistance in our country to individual fundamental firearm civil rights. And we're going to see a lot, of, a lot of action on the local level. That's true. So people need to be, I'm just thinking out loud now, they need to be involved in their state organizations because a lot of times you don't even know what's going on if you're not plugged into your state organization. And then... Of course, I'm thinking about the Second Amendment Foundation, where one of the big roles there is litigation, is challenging things in court. And we've we've had a really good success rate there. But I guess just finding a way to make sure you're aware of what's going on, huh? Yeah, that's one thing. And talking about litigation for the Second Amendment Foundation, we we won at the appeals court level two important cases, Binder Up and Suarez, dealing with restoration of firearms rights. Uh, and the government just the other day, uh, uh, under the Obama administration Justice Department, filed this motion for cert with the U.S. Supreme Court to try to reverse our victories. And, of course, we're working mm. with, the, with the incoming new Justice Department people to, to try and reverse mm-hmm. that and have them you know, either uh, kill the motion for cert so that we automatically win or say, OK, let's go for cert, but we agree with the Second Amendment Foundation and people should be able to have rights restored uh, unlike the Obama administration. So right now we're, we're locked in this legal battle uh, as the Obama administration is leaving, trying to uh, screw up some of our victories, and hopefully the Trump administration coming in. And that's the importance of getting Sessions confirmed as well as Attorney General. So people should be writing their senators to confirm Sessions uh, as Attorney General. Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation. Uh, by the way, saf.org if you want to go check out what's going on over at, uh, at Alan's uh, website, what's going on there. Uh, we're open lines right now. If you'd like to get involved, if there's a, uh, a question you have, a thought about this shooting in Florida at the baggage claim area, or about what Trump and his folks should be doing, 866-TALK-GUN get you in. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. That's 866-TALK-GUN. We 
love rage reports. I I get this one from Adrian. He says, hey, Tom, this is Adrian from Denver, Colorado. Just a quick rage report about the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan. It says, man, this gun is fantastic. That's our big revolver, in case you don't know. Before I bought it, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube of people shooting it, and the recoil looked horrible. A lot, way too much. It's on the 454 Casual, and it has a two and a half inch barrel. Well, he says it took me eight months to get it. And when I shot it, man, the best gun, all caps, the best gun I ever shot. I guess it depends on how you grip the gun. The recoil is not that bad. It's pretty good, he says. Hitting the X at 25 yards. The uh, the grip has that blue gel in the back to help with the recoil. Just to get the word out, try and shoot every gun. Everybody is different. Not everybody is YouTube. Good point. Uh, and oh, by the way, the nice part about that, it's chambered at the 454 Casual, but you can shoot 45 Colt in it. And those have everything from pretty hefty loads to very, very light loads. Sweet, sweet rig. Let's see. I want to drop down to line four, get Rodney uh, in Bossier City, Louisiana. Hey, Rodney, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, Mr. Tom. Uh, mm-hmm. I went to the uh, state police office here in, where I live to uh, get uh, some information on where you can't carry a gun, and this is what they printed out. It said prohibited locations, a law enforcement office, station, or building, a detention facility, prison, or jail, a courthouse or courtroom, provided that a judge may carry such a weapon in his own courtroom, a polling mm-hmm. place, a meeting place of the governing authority of a political subdivision, the state capitol building, any portion of an airport facility where the carrying of firearms is prohibited under federal law, except that no person shall be prohibited from carrying any legal firearm into the terminal if the firearm is encased for shipment for the purpose of checking such firearm as lawful baggage. So in other words, it is legal to carry, in the state of Louisiana, it's actually legal to carry a loaded gun into the airport as long as you don't try to go through the security area. Just what I said. Exactly. And this is from the state police. And, and it, But this is, was, I thought was kind of strange that you have to air ask uh, the owner of a private residence or of another yes. without first receiving the consent uh, of that person. You have to ask your neighbor, is it okay if you bring your gun into his house? You know, it's interesting you mention that, and I don't know if other states have that, but I do that Louisiana does. For Let me explain that for people. And look, Rodney, I appreciate the call. This is weird. Do other, you Let me know, do other states have this? In Louisiana, in the state of Louisiana, when you have a carry permit and you're carrying your gun, you are required by law to get the approval of someone before you can carry a gun into their private home. Now, I don't know anybody who actually does that. But that is the law in Louisiana. I just have never heard that being the law anywhere else. Just just don't know. Um, let's see. What? The, yeah, we got enough time here. I'm going to get Robert in here on line three. Robert, I have one minute, 60 seconds. Go for it. Hi, Tom. That's, that's okay. I got the sergeant major trying to get a hold of me here, so I got to make this quick. Um, okay. Look, I, I want to thank you uh, exponentially, Tom, for first-person defender, all of your comments and opinions, all of your expert advice to your listeners and to the general public that you've given over the years. I think first-person defender is absolute cutting edge. And as a, as a veteran myself, I, I think it is a, a very valuable uh, tool for the, for the general public, and I would encourage everyone to, uh, to watch that first-person defender. Well, I, I appreciate that, man. I really do. And I, I know that you had somewhere else to go, but we are, in fact, at this point out of time. And I appreciate that, Robert. I'm going to pet, let people know, first person offender, he, what he was talking about. By the way, Robert wanted to say he would not, it wouldn't bother him to see active duty personnel protecting airports because the threats are rising. First person offender, check it out on YouTube and on Roku. First person offender, it is uh, stuff that might just save your life.